Okay, welcome to chapter six in the administration book. So chapter six is adding roles to a Windows Server 2019, page 179. So let's look at the learning objectives. They talk about roles and features, application servers, web servers, remote services, and file and print services. Some of those I'm gonna ask you to do in the term project. Okay, so starting off, what the heck is the difference between a role, a service, and a feature? Yeah, okay, we're gonna get we're gonna get to that, but let me give you a head a, a preview. So a role is like Active Directory Domain Controller. That's a role, but in that role comes lots of services that get turned on. Remember what a service is? That's something that runs behind the scenes and doesn't normally have you know runs when it boots up and there's no user interface. Okay, and then a feature is, you know, you selected this, so that has a dependency on something over here. Okay. Understanding role, uh, understanding server roles. Um, so, via the server manager, right? N kind of normal stuff, right? So we've done this before. So I'm gonna go to the server manager and I'm gonna click on the guy. And you know, we just added an Active Directory role not too long ago, so. We'll just take a peek. So we're going to go here, say add roles and features. And, you know, we got the beginning one that basically says, you know, hello. And then whether or not this is a role based thing, or are you trying to do this over some sort of virtual machine? And then, you know, what server you want. And then the list of server roles. And so Active Directory Domain C Controller basically is a server role, right? Okay. We don't have that many installed. Oddly enough, we do have some pieces of file services. We have file services installed. Why do you think that is? Well, it turns out that Active Directory requires that we have a, a way to get other machines to contact us and pull data from it. So it's kind of sort of required. Okay. So in real life, you probably would not add any additional roles to a domain controller. Normally you have the domain controller doing domain controller things and nothing else. Uh, the only exception to the rule is we definitely need the DNS server. But everything else, you know, print services, you know, uh, and web services, you would never put that on a domain controller. You'd have a separate machine just for that. But hey, this is the classroom environment, right? Okay, so we are going to do some things that are contrary to normal way of thinking. So when you, on page 180, when you install a role, it'll come with a list of required services. So that's what happened here. When we clicked on this, it fired up a whole bunch of services. Hey, how can you find out where our service is? You think maybe if I go here and look for manage, there might be something in here about, uh, hmm, I don't know, tools, uh, something about services. Why, there it is. And here's a gazillion. I got a lot of things running. I got this domain services and web services, a bunch of other things in here that got turned on when we installed that role. Okay, so lots of other things involved. I don't really know how many of them got installed to tell you the truth, but it was probably, you know, half a dozen or so. Okay, so we selected a role, it added services. So what is the feature? Okay, one more time. So a feature is, let's say, for example, I'm just going to pick one. Uh, so this particular thing, the Windows Event Log Guy, let's just say that behind the scenes, it requires the .NET framework, okay? So that would be a feature that's required by a service, which is required by a role. Okay, you guys got this now, right? So if I ask you a question about those three terms, you're going to be able to just rattle this stuff off, aren't you? Good. Okay. So... They, they talk about on page 181 that Internet Information Services, that's the, the web services thing, um, it requires a .NET framework to be installed. So that's one of the features. Okay, so um, let's talk about, I'm going to skip over the mail services and database and collaboration because quite frankly, once you've done one of these roles, um, okay, you've done one, you've done them all. I mean, it's just kind of sort of simple. You pick a role. Go through the thing and, you know, it's not this, not that much different. The configuration after the fact, well, that's different. I mean, configuring DNS or configuring a web service, yeah. But installing the role? Pfft, anybody could do that. Okay. 
So I'm going to move on to page 185, talking about understanding monitoring the server. So I need some way of determining the health of my system. Hey, look at this green thing here. Does that kind of indicate something's going on? Yeah, isn't that pretty cool? It's green, which means, you know, my Active Directory services is up and running with no trouble. My DNS, my file and print services are up and running, and my local server seems to be doing okay. So that'd be kind of cool, right? To have some way of, of, particularly if I had multiple servers, right? I want to know if somebody is not behaving. So monitoring the health and performance is a good thing. So where does this stuff get stored? Well, if you turn on monitoring and you want to do health monitoring, it's going to go into the event viewer. Ooh, where's the event viewer? Can I have something in here about event viewer? Why, yes, there is. Um, now, the problem is, by default, the event viewer is going to put everything on each server. So if I have a half a dozen servers, then to see if there was something going wrong, I would basically have to go to each one of the machines one at a time and then go look, probably filter one of these things to hunt for things that are errors, okay, things like that. Uh, that's not a good idea. So it would make sense you would have some sort of log consolidation feature. Uh, Microsoft has a way of doing it. There's also lots of third-party software that does this, where it gathers all this information from all the servers, maybe even all the P every PC in your entire network, consolidates all the logs and gives you a summary report at the end of the day. Uh, that way, when you get in in the morning, you just open this thing up and look at it and go, yeah, it looks like, it looks like everything's okay. Or, ooh, something's going on with the, the web server here. We've got an awful lot of red. That would be kind of handy. Okay, so understanding threat management on page 185. So monitoring the firewall, yeah, that would be one of the things you probably want to look at. Anti-malware stuff, you know, the antivirus stuff. VPN access, perhaps what you want to look for is like VPN denied, like people trying to get in. Remote access, that those kind of things, who's, who's getting in and who's not, that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to bring up one of these guys. Uh, I'm going to bring up Windows Logs. And this is a traditional Windows Log scenario we've had since Windows NT. Then I'm going to click on this one that says Application Services. These are the ones specifically designed to help categorize. The, so this is actually duplicated in here, but it's just easy. So I'm going to go to DNS Server and see if we got any red. Well, we got a warning over here. Let's look what the warning says. It's waiting active drain services to synchronize. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. It's when we bring the machine up, sometimes it's kind of slow and maybe the services don't come up all the, you know, I can, I can filter this guy and go in here and filter the current thing. It's all I want to look at is things that are errors. That'd be kind of cool. Hardware events. Do I have any hardware that's, that's getting ready to, to go out? Uh, apparently I don't have any real hardware at all. Um, Let's look at directory services. So I got a couple warnings over here. What does that say? Could, could be significantly enhanced. Validation of channel binding. Oh, I don't care about that. Yeah, and it's basically telling me that I've, I've left it at the defaults, and so therefore I'm not quite as, as secure as I need to be. Okay, but again, this is kind of things you need to go through and look at to see what's going on. Okay, let's talk about web services one more time. So collectively, when you talk about web services in the Intel world, um, I'm sorry, the uh, Microsoft world is called Internet Information Systems, IIS. So, okay, let me go one more time. So I'm going to go here to manage. I'm going to go to add and skip over the first guy. Skip over that, skip over that. And then scroll all the way down here and it says web server and then parentheses it says IIS. That's the guy. That's And he's got an awful lot of pieces to him. So it contains support for, you know, HTTP protocol and HTTPS and FTP and all these other you know, web internet related protocols get get installed and turned on. It also provides a basic front end to a web server. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on this guy and it says, hey man, you wanna add all these features? Yep, sure, go right ahead. And I'm gonna hit next and uh, I don't wanna do anything more. And then, so I do, now this is the, the web server role thing that's basically telling me, hey, I'm getting ready to do this. And it says, here's what I'm gonna do, wow, okay. I'm doing health and diagnostics. We just talked about that. I'm doing performance. I'm doing security. I'm doing all sorts of other things. I'm just going to take the defaults. And then it says, okay, I'm ready. Great. I'm going to do the install. This shouldn't take too long. 
Okay, that took a little over a minute on my machine. So I've got it installed and I'm thinking, woohoo, I'm done. Well, not hardly. Um, so unlike before, we don't actually have anything meaningful here. We don't have a little yellow triangle. And if I click on this guy, that's not really how you manage it. It basically just telling me how many servers I got and what the events are. So that's not how you manage this guy. I'm going to have to go down to the command prompt and go through here and find the guy. All right, so where would you think it'd be? Well, yeah, administrative tools. So what's it going to be called? Is it going to be called web or is it going to be called IIS? What on earth is it going to be called? Where the heck is it? Well, here it is. Internet Information Services, IIS. So it starts up and you basically have, a, I don't really pay much attention to the start pages. Let me click on the server guy. So this is kind of complicated. There's, you can just look at this and tell there's quite a lot of moving parts. I mean, one of the things is, you know, how are you doing authentication? How are you going to be compressing any things? And what are the, what's the default documents? You know, where do you allow directory browsing and all these, you know, do you only custom error messages? And then, you know, how do, how you do, I mean, lots and lots and lots of stuff. So if I expand this guy, it's going to tell me that I have a default website now. But so when you install IIS, you get one website, but if you wanted more, you could have multiple websites running, but only have one copy of IIS. That kind of makes sense. Okay, good. So uh, we're going to configure this, but perhaps later. Uh, basically, what I would want to know is, you know, where the heck are my files? You know, where do I put things? If where, basically, where is my web page? Because I'm going to go in here and edit things. Okay but for some other day. So on page 188, they talk about what is the World Wide Web? What is WWW? Well, you know, the internet is the big thing, right? And then a subset of the internet is the web. A lot of people just use those terms interchangeably. It's just not so. I mean, when I'm sending email from my Outlook to some server, you know, in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, I am using the internet, but I am not using the web. Okay, just make sure you understand all that. So the web basically is a set of machines that all use a common protocol. They use HTTP or HTTPS, and that becomes a web server. So um, I mentioned FTP, or it mentioned FTP. Uh, I can have an FTP site. FTP stands for File Transfer Protocol. In the old days, that was a common way to uh, you know push files from one machine to another was to go to an FTP site and download it or push files up. Not so much now. Most people use the web to perform that service. Um, high degree of, of, of security associated with FTP. You know, I don't want to have other people be able to dump files on my server. You know, that, I don't want that. Okay, so the next thing we need to talk about on page 90 is just this concept of an application pool. Okay. This is a little strange, but just bear with me. A single website might have multiple web applications. Okay, uh, let me give you an example of what an application is. Okay, so I'm gonna bring up uh, one of my web pages. This is a static web page. There's nothing else going on here. I mean, there's not much going on, except if I click on this guy right here, it's gonna launch a web application. So now I'm running an application inside my web page. So if I wanna know what you know, 78, uh, you know, two times, it, it's a calculator, right? And it's working on the web. So this is a web application. So web applications consume a heck of a lot more resources than just this static web page. So they have an application pool. And so if I have, I could have one pool that handles all the applications, or I could put in multiple application pools so this one only gets that one, and I, that way I can provide more resources to each one. I could even have double up, so to speak, and have more threads associated with a particular application than the others. Cool, huh? Okay, we're coming up on the 15-minute mark.